Hey everyone, I thought I'd kick off the new year with a tutorial on how to animate in Krita and give you some hopefully helpful tips to get you started. So Krita is a free program and can be downloaded on their website. It also has a look and feel similar to Photoshop with a range of really amazing brushes. Changes and improvements are funded through donations, so this means that bugs might not be fixed as quickly as other programs, but they do seem to update the software pretty regularly, and if you can't afford other programs or are just starting out in animation, I think this is a pretty good choice. Now I'm just going to open Critter and set up a new file. If it's a short film or something for YouTube, I'll go the usual 1920 by 1080 pixels. If it's a loop for Instagram, I'll go for a square canvas, usually around 800 by 800. So if you click content here, you can change the name of your file, how many layers you want the canvas to open with, as well as change the background color. A nice option Critter offers is animation template, and this gives the canvas a frame that makes it look like you've been animating traditionally. If you do select this option, you'll see layers to the right, which have been pre-made and labeled to help you organize your animation. You can do it this way, but I like to add things as and when I need them. So I'm just going to create a new custom document at 800 by 800. Now, if you've downloaded the software, it doesn't look too much like an animation program so far because we're currently in the default workspace for Critter. However, if you like the setup but want the animation tools, all you need to do is go to settings, dockers, and then hit animation and timeline. There is an option in dockers for onion skin, but there is a button on the timeline panel to bring up and hide this feature here too. Another way to bring up the animation features is to go to window workspace animation, which is quicker, though I have to bring up the brush presets in Dockers just in case I want to change my brush while I'm working. Now, in the animation toolbar, you can see what frame you're currently on, where your animation will start and end, and your playback buttons. To change your frame rate, enter a new value here. For me, it's usually 25 frames a second. To the left of that, you have several options like add a new frame, add duplicate frame, and remove keyframe without moving anything around. On the next row, we have options called drop frame, and this means if I'm playing my animation through and my computer is lagging, it'll drop a couple of frames to make sure it keeps time with my animation. This next one is auto frame mode, which is on. If I keep it like that, it'll create a new keyframe every time I move across the timeline and draw something. If I turn it off, I'll only be making changes to the last keyframe I made. Now it's pretty obvious from the icon, but this is the onion skin and tapping it will bring up this window. The onion skin shows your frames before and after the frame you're working on in different colors, which you can change here and increase or decrease the opacity of each. It's great for doing in-betweens and keeping things consistent if you need to trace over your previous frame. You can have up to 10 frames showing before or after your current frame, but usually I'll just stick with one either side. Next up is the audio feature. It has options to open, mute, remove, and change the volume of the track. As you can see, I've got a little message up here which says audio is not supported in this build. I think I had an earlier version where it did work for me, but I updated to make this tutorial and now it doesn't work. I'm not that bothered by this because you can animate and then add audio in another program afterwards and export the two from there but this will definitely make lip sync a lot more difficult if you want to make it in Critter. They seem to update pretty regularly, so I don't expect that this feature will stay broken for long. Now, if I animate something here just very quickly and I want to clean it up, I can add in another layer by going into Timeline here or the Layers panel. But suddenly my roughs are gone. Luckily, I haven't lost all my animation, they're just hidden, and that's because if you want to keep your layers on the timeline, you need to right-click on the layers you want to see and click Show in Timeline. Now, this is good if I've got loads of layers and just want to focus on one, but it also means that I can see what they look like all together. As you get used to Critter and start animating more quickly, you're going to want to set up your shortcuts and hotkeys. To open it up, go to Critter, Preferences, and then Keyboard Shortcuts. A lot of my shortcuts for the animation tools have no assigned keys, so what you need to do is write down a list of all the features you want to use when animating that will help you work faster and figure out which keys you want to assign them to. The shortcuts I found the most important to set up and help me work faster were Create Blank Frame, Next Keyframe, Previous Keyframe, Remove Keyframe, and Toggle Onion Skin. 
You can check what keys have already been assigned in the menu and work around that or override the ones that exist already by clicking none and then entering a key. If the shortcut is already being used, this window will pop up telling you what it's assigned to and then you can either cancel or continue by hitting reassign. Clicking this blank square will erase the shortcut. Once I'm happy with my animation, I can export it, but it's not quite as simple as it is in other programs. I'd watched a few tutorials on exporting both in Windows and Mac that made me go, nope, there's too many steps, I'll do something else. But there's obviously been an update because I did it very quickly and it wasn't as complicated as I first thought. So to export, I can go to File, Render Animation. I can export as an image sequence and enter the first and last frames of my animation. I usually set my file type to PNG if I want to bring it into another program and need to layer it up with camera moves and different backgrounds. Exporting the animation like this will create a new image for every frame in my animation, so if there's a lot of them, you'll want to make a new folder to keep them all together. To export as a video, which you'll want to do if you've got sound or you want to play it through without having to do anything else, you'll need to get something called FFmpeg and save it in your computer where it won't be deleted because you'll need this file every time you want to export a video. So if you head to this website, there's a few different options. I kept the first option selected and chose Mac because that's what I'm working on. If you're on a Windows, be sure to select what version you have. I then kept the top option selected on the third menu and hit download. Once that was finished, I unzipped the file and moved the folder to my desktop. In this folder, there is another called bin and if you open that, you'll see FFmpeg. I moved this file onto my desktop and deleted the rest and it still works for me, so it doesn't seem like I actually need to keep anything else. Going back to Critter and my export, I can select the FFmpeg I've just downloaded. If you've got sound, be sure to include the audio and then select OK. After that, just check that it plays. If it does, great. If it doesn't, like my first try didn't, go back into Critter and re-export it, except click these three little dots beside Render As and make sure the drop-down menu beside Profile has Baseline selected. Hit OK to re-export it and it should work. If it still doesn't work, I used a program called Handbrake, which again is free, and I used these settings. If you want to copy them down, just hit pause at any point in the video. This program will re-export your animation as a new file, allowing you to play it. I also use these settings on big animations to bring down the file size a bit without absolutely destroying the quality. Finally, I just wanted to mention two channels I follow that use Critter. I apologise now if I pronounce either of these wrong. So, the first is Sarah Tepes and she does some really beautiful digital paintings in the software. She has tutorials up on her channel with digital and traditional painting as well. The second channel is Ed Tadeo and he has a lot of speed paints and animations using Critter which are amazing. I'll leave links to both of their channels in the description and you should definitely go and check them out. So I think I've covered everything in this tutorial. I really hope you found it useful and can enjoy making some animations for free. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this from me, give this video a like and subscribe and I'll be back with another one real soon. Bye.